been sitting here the past two hours now procrastinating on doing this video like should I do it? Should I not do it? It's one in the morning. Okay, so here we are. Dear David, part two. This was highly requested. Every single day I get a bunch of comments asking me to do a part two on this. It's not gonna be a huge update, but it is an update and somebody tweeted me a pic and it gave me the heebie-jeebies, like this one. We're not fucking around anymore. Dear David is a ghost and he's real. There is photo and video evidence. If you guys don't believe me, I'll leave a link to part one. Definitely watch that before watching this one. All right, so where we left off last time, there's a little thing in the ceiling. Oh, that is, that's pretty high up. He never noticed that little attic thing, so. It's really high above the stairs, so I always figured it would be impossible to access it without some sort of fancy professional ladder. I see the hatch every morning when I leave for work and think nothing of it, but this time something dawned on me. It can't lead to the roof because it's actually below the roof and he's trying to get in here here's the old apartment here's a new apartment which is above it there's the empty space the roof access the roof where he thought he saw David so you can't really go up there nobody can go up there but he saw David there but David is a ghost and by ghost logic they could do whatever the f they want mm-hmm I think maybe the hatch leads to a short ladder going through the roof, but even if that's the case, the hatch is level with all the ceilings in my apartment. That means there's three feet of empty space all over my apartment. Oh, damn, that's a lot. So he's got three feet of attic above his apartment. Who knows what's living in that three feet of attic? Cause that's a lot of attic. But over the past week and a half, I've been hearing more things above me. A few, a few days after the first sound, I heard a similar thump while I was in the kitchen. Then last night, I heard something small cling to the floor and roll about six feet before stopping. So we left off here. He bought a pole off Amazon so he can investigate and see what's up there. A lot has happened in the last week, but I was away for Thanksgiving, so I'm just now able to write it down. The noises from the ceiling haven't let up, but the pole I ordered didn't arrive before I had to leave for the holidays, so I didn't get it until late Friday night. I planned to investigate the next morning and went to bed. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to an incredibly loud crash above me. It sounded like someone had dropped a bowling ball. Sounds like dear David dropping some bombs. Dropping deuces. After about a minute, I heard another crash. I briefly thought about grabbing my shoes and booking it, but that would mean passing under the hatch, and that seemed like a bad idea. So instead, I just listened and waited, though I'm not sure for what. Yo, why didn't you record this? Why aren't you documenting everything here? Like all these random loud sounds? I mean, you live in an apartment. There's always random loud sounds. Could be anything. The crash happened again. And then again, probably 15 times in a row, followed by a long silence. Then I heard a smaller, creaky sound from the hallway. In my mind, I registered as a footstep, but it really could have been anything. So you're just hearing 15 times. What are you doing? Just. Like, where, where is all this coming from? Above you? Like, maybe they're doing construction or something. I stayed still, but there were no more sounds after that. I lay back down, still tense and nervous. But I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up the next morning and everything seemed normal again. I got dressed and left to go get a bagel. Same as every Saturday. So was it like a dream? I'm confused. As I made my way down the stairs, something crunched under my feet. I looked down and noticed a pile of debris in the stairs, directly under the hatch. Oh, you know what this means? Dear David, Knocking on that attic door like, bitch, I live here now, okay? You trying to get a pole and like, poke my ass through my home? No, 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 I'm not having that. He is not having that. Something is going on up there. It looked like dirt, but I couldn't tell for certain. It could have been old plaster or something. I glanced up at the hatch and noticed something else peculiar. The edge of something was caught in it, barely poking out. It's hard to see because it's so far up, but I took a photo. Oh no, something just magically is sticking out of the hatch. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just when you start to investigate the hatch, clues are left lying around for you. Okay, all right, let's see what this is. At that point, bagels were the last thing on my mind. I went back upstairs and grabbed the pole. I set my camera on the coat wardrobe at the top of the stairs and hit record just to make sure it would be caught on video if a demon burst out of the hatch. <laughs> oh no, here's the video. 
Damn, that's a long pull. That's what she said. Come on. Hit it harder. Harder, you gotta, ooh. Was that a damn shoe? Who put the Yeezys up here? I jumped out of the way and practically fell down the stairs trying to dodge whatever it was that fell. At first I thought it was a dead squirrel, which would honestly explain a lot. It hit the steps and then bounced down to the first floor. I went upstairs to get my phone and collapsed the pole since it's so long and unwieldy, then went back downstairs to investigate the object that fell. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. It was dingy, faded black. I picked it up and realized it was a small leather shoe. David, why are you leaving your little shoes around? This dude got some small ass feet. I mean, I know he's a kid and everything, but I mean, if the head is big, does that mean the feet are big? That's a shoe from the 19th century, my dudes. I hustled back upstairs and texted my landlord. I told him I thought there was something in the crawl space and asked if he could investigate. He said he'd come by later with a ladder and check it out. A few hours later, my landlord was on a ladder, shining a flashlight through the crawl space. I stared up at him, half expecting something to grab him and yank him into the darkness. He angled his flashlight all around, finally saying, there's nothing up here. But then he was like, oh wait! I watched as he reached up into the emptiness with his free arm and what he pulled back he had something small and round in his hand. He climbed down the ladder and handed it to me. Calm down. Calm down, everybody. Again, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It was smooth and shiny, and at first I thought it was an old piece of candy, but it was cold and too heavy to be candy. After a second, I realized it was a marble. Those are some old ass marbles, like before my time. It was so worn that it hadn't registered as a marble at first. Its shape was also sort of weird with a little bump on one end. Oh no, no, come on. Stop with this. Everything gotta be deformed on one end, right? Just like David. Why are you coming at David like that? That's why he's haunting you. Because everything you see, you're comparing it to him. Like, oh, this little marble right here has got a dent in his head. Like, somebody I know. <laughs> My landlord seemed unbothered for the most part, uh, okay dude, and he told me to call him if I heard anything else. I went inside and headed to my office to see if I could figure anything about this marble that somehow made its way into my ceiling. I had nothing to go on, and in short, I didn't really learn much, but I did figure out the bump on the marble, I think. Apparently in the early 1900s, they made marbles by hand and cut them with big metal scissors, which would mean the marble is probably really old. Yeah, well, that kind of marble is really old. I mean, during my time, when we had marbles, they used to be like this. I wonder how they make these, actually. 1900s. See, I'm sure they had like these kind of marbles, so they look much older than these modern marbles. I used to have this exact set, vintage marbles. Y'all making me feel old, okay? Everything I grew up playing with is now vintage. <laughs> anyway, now I have a decrepit old shoe and a marble sitting on my dresser. I guess this is the new normal. I mean, you could have threw them out, but you're gonna keep them there. You're gonna keep David's belongings in your house. Of course he's gonna think it's okay to come back and forth between his ceiling house and the outside of your window and into that chair. So this is a newer update. Sorry for the long break. I haven't been feeling great the past few couple weeks and I haven't had time to up. There also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well. I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting sudden bouts of dizziness. I chalked it up to always having earbuds crammed in and made a mental note to get my ears checked. Other than that, things were pretty quiet. I sort of fooled myself into thinking that finding those items in the attic somehow ended all of this. Not that that wouldn't make much sense. But the last week, something started to happen. Late on Wednesday, I woke up with a start and felt something strange, like something had been watching me. I turned on the light, but I was alone. Still, there was this tangible feeling of badassness. Everything felt wrong, sort of like when you have the flu and you wake up at night and you can't really tell where you are for a minute. Ooh, I hate that. That's so scary. It's like you wake up and you're like, wait, am I still in a dream? Is this real life? Where am I? It was a feeling I'm used to. It always accompanies David. People tweet me a lot saying he just might need help, but I'm certain that's not the case. Every time he shows up, I feel a palpable sense of malice. There's what I felt that night. Malice. Dread. But still, I was alone and I was so tired. I wound up just going back to sleep. I've been so exhausted recently I can barely function. The next night, the same thing happened. I woke up suddenly, feeling like I had missed seeing something. Like a candle had just gone out and I could still smell it. Ooh, that's the best. I love that smell. 
when you blow out a candle and you could still smell it it's so good I thought about using the pet cam from my living room to monitor my bedroom while I slept but the cord was too short to get the camera high enough to see the entire room so I improvised I downloaded an app that takes a photo every 60 seconds and set my phone on top of a bookcase it's almost seven feet tall so I had a pretty good view of my bed in the surrounding room then I went to sleep do I want to know what happens next there's a picture down there just like before, I jolted awake hours later, feeling the same unease. I turned on the light and hurried out of my bed to get my phone from the bookcase. There were probably 350 photos to scroll through. Bro! No way! Whew, there's nothing there. There's nothing there, right? The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see me sleeping. I left a couple night lights on in case anything showed up, but for the first hundred or so photos, this is just me in an empty room. I should probably get this app. I wonder what goes on in my room when I'm asleep. Oh! No! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh, no, no, no. I'm done. I'm done. This is not real. This. Then suddenly he was there, standing on the chair at the foot of the bed, staring at me. No. No. Hecking. Way. This gives me the heebie majibi. Ah! Hell no! Hell fucking no, man! Hell no! I'm not having this. I'm not having this. Like, imagine going to sleep and having this next to you. The next photo, from a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling. Just staring. He's just gonna go in your room, make himself comfortable on your couch. Oh, what a little piece of shit, man. He's like, you see that up there? That's where I live. You don't like it? I don't know, move to another damn building. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna follow you if you move to another building. I mean, he's got his shoe there, he's got his marbles there. It seems like he lives there. Then he appears to collapse on the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first I thought he was dead, which obviously doesn't make any sense. I looked over at the chair half expecting him to still be there, but it was empty. Okay, good riddance. I hope he's done. Maybe he just passed out. He's like tired or something. No. No. Uh-uh. Ugly little dent head over here. Just gonna collapse. I'm gonna crash on my couch. No. You, you can't. I never said you could stay here. I never said you could crash here. But then in the next photo, he's gone. The room is totally empty again. He's gone in the next several photos too. I figured maybe that was it, but I kept swiping through the photos. About 15 photos later, he was back, standing next to the bed. It was just like the last time I saw him. Where is he in this? Ah! He's right here! He's right here. That does not look real to me. It does not look real to me. It looks like he's like blended in with other stuff. He's right here. That's so creepy. He's just sitting there staring at you. That's not okay. Like it's not. I'm not your friend, man. That's when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest of the photos, but I knew I had to. I swiped to the next photo and my heart sank to my stomach. He was on the bed inches from me, staring down at me sleeping. can't with this anymore. Like, imagine being in this situation, you take pictures of yourself while you're asleep, and you get this bullshit. Uh-uh. He is on the damn bed looking at him. Don't know if he did anything else. <laughs> the next one was worse, and <laughs> it can't get worse. In the next photo, he's staring right at the camera. He knows what you're doing to him. You're exploiting him on Twitter and he, he's aware. He's become aware. After that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again and the rest of the scroll is just me alone in my room again. That is until this last photo. Here is the final photo on the scroll. Uh, 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 I, can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Oh. <laughs> Bro, 
really. I'm at a loss for words, that malformed ear, the stringy hair, I didn't even know what to think. I looked all over my room but I couldn't find anything and honestly I've just been so exhausted I didn't know how to process it. Even now all I want to do is just go to sleep. Yeah same, if I saw all this bullshit I'd just be like yeah okay. I can't do this anymore David! Just get out of my room man. People commented, it's official, dear David is fake. As someone who has been ghost hunting for several years, I can tell you ghosts do not photograph like this. Nice try, buddy. You almost had me until you posted these photos. It's a doll. Yeah, well, I'm here for the ride. It's a good ride. It's scary, it's creepy, and you never really know if it's real or not. But also, I'm a very reasonable and logical person. This all does seem like, like, hey, let's stir up some shit. And that's exactly what this dude did. But I mean, this whole story, it's, it's creepy. I don't know, comment below, tell me what you guys think. And make sure you leave a like on this video if you want a part three when there's more information. I will keep you guys updated. Make sure you subscribe, join the wolf pack. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.